Hi, and welcome to the Health Begins with Moms show. I am Dorit Pavanov, your host. On this podcast, I will share insights and interviews on health, parenting, and explore the question of what does it take to thrive as women, wives, and mothers. Now, let's get going with today's episode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Health Begins With Mom podcast. This is Dorit Palvanov, your host. Before we begin, I want to remind everybody that you can find the show notes from today's episode over at my website, healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash EP 32. This is also the place where you can find whatever I'm going to talk about in written format, in a blog format. So it, we are going to cover quite a lot today. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I need to take some notes, don't worry. It's all available for you over at my website. Also, the doors to the Thrive Mastermind for Conscious Mothers who are raising girls are currently open. If you want to learn how to take back control of your health and how to teach healthier eating and lifestyle habits to your daughter, this is the place for you. You can find the application in the show notes on my website. Again, it's healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash EP32 or in the description section if you are listening on iTunes or Stitcher. All right, so today's topic is what your menstrual cycle can teach you about your body. And the question that I love asking women is, how much do you really love and appreciate being a woman? Come on, be honest. How much do you really love bleeding every month? How much do you really appreciate the fact that your mood shifts every two seconds? How much do you really love the fact that anything can make you cry, that you can't shut your mouth when needed, you feel guilty about pretty much everything, and that everything feels right and wrong at all at the same time? Oh, and you also know that, fe- and you also know that feeling that you have to apologize for everything, right? So, how much do you love? Do you really love that about yourself? Then, how about your constant search for balance? I don't hear men looking for balance. How come they have it and we don't? Admit that you feel unappreciated at home because it is clear that you do so much more than your partner. Your work never ends. And mine too. (laughs) We've all been complaining that we have two shifts. One starts once you leave the home and then the other starts once you come back home. How do you feel about the biological clock question? You know, is it time to have a baby or should I wait or should I not? How much do you love your female body? How much do you love these curves of yours? Stretch marks, the saggy belly that you've earned after multiple pregnancies. Oh, and don't get me started talking about being pregnant. I mean, up to six months, months, it was kind of cute. But after that... I personally felt like a whale or maybe a sea lion. So are you with me so far? (laughs) And then there are deeper deeper layers to this question, deeper um, layers pertaining to your womanhood. As women, I think we all struggle with setting boundaries to protect ourselves and our families. But how do you do that in a way that doesn't make us look bad, right? Remember that, you know, that icky feeling you get. How about knowing what you want with regards to your life's purpose? You know, I hate that question. What do you mean what I want? I want everything and I want it now. How about the feeling we all have that we are in constant competition with no other than other women? I mean, how absurd is that? I love this quote. It says, a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. So let's just be like these flowers, right? Let's just all bloom and thrive. And how are you doing with regards to the most complicated relationship you'll ever have, which is with your mother? So yeah, being a woman is messy. It's juicy. It's complicated. It's chaotic sometimes, but so beautiful, wild, and majestic. Unfortunately, so many women, and I include myself in this as well, would would much rather be men life seems easier as a man 
However, if there's something the world is missing at this point in time, it's more feminine power, which is more flexibility, fluidity, and compassion, which are all qualities of the divine feminine. So what is a woman? What does it mean to be feminine? Womanhood and femininity both embody polarity. There is softness on one side, but harshness on the other compassion on one side and ferocity on the other. As women, we all strive to live in contentment and adventure, freedom and service. We all in some way possess beauty, creativity, intuition and love, although most of us have no idea how to embody womanhood and live in alignment with our divine feminine superpower. And I say superpower because it is superpower. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not pretending to know more than you on this topic. I do admit, however, that I am super curious and thirsty to figure it out and hope and hopefully you will join me on this journey as well. And one of my biggest goals is to learn this so that I can then go and raise my girls because as you know, I have three girls and this is something that if, if this if I can call this to be my legacy, then be it. I want this to be my legacy. I want my girls to love and enjoy living in a female body. So what you need to know is that you are made for love and you are loved, cellulite and all. <laughs> my goal with this particular podcast episode is to expose every woman to the richness and beauty of her female body and how to use this knowledge so that you can live your life with ease and flow. Many of us don't know that the female body is cyclical in nature, meaning it restores, it restores itself in a cyclical rhythm, as opposed to the masculine nature, which is linear for the most part. Now, don't forget, don't get me wrong, men cycle as well. However, their cyclicality culminates, which means it ends, it restarts itself every 24 hours, as opposed to women who cycle every 30 days. So what are some examples of nature's cycles? So you can think about the seasons, the changing of the seasons, right? The weather and climate, they change approximately every quarter. And then the changes from day into night, they change every 24 hours. And then the moon, which goes through four phases each month. Some people say it's eight, eight phases. It doesn't re really matter how many phases there are. Um, the, the important thing to remember is that the moon goes through phases as well. So as human beings, we are not disconnected from nature. The contrary is true. We are actually a part of nature. And as a result, our bodies also go through cycles and changes. And females in particular cycle through menst menstruation, which averages, averages about 20, 28 days, which interest, interestingly is very similar to the phases of the moon. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now, before I go any deeper into this topic, I want to include a, a, a little side note. If your cycle is less than 20, 28 days or more than that, then you can still benefit from this as well. We are talking about an average here, but the point to remember here is the, is the predictability. If your menstrual cycle is pretty regular and repeats regularly, then this information is relevant, relevant to you. So first of all, you need to know that we women are connected to the moon, which is is also on a 30-day cycle. So in case you, you no longer menstruate, you can still benefit from cyclicality by following the four phases of the moon every 30 days. So if your menstrual cycle is irregular due to conditions such as polycystic ovaries, aka PCOS, PMS, weight gain, or if you are still breastfeeding and haven't gotten your period yet, you can still live in cyclicality. But instead of your body's rhythm, you can sync yourself to the four phases of the moon. So if you're interested to learn more about this, you can follow Dr. Easy Spencer online, who is the creator of LunarAbundance.com, where she teaches women how to benefit from your relationship with the moon. Now, I know this sounds woo-woo, but believe me, this stuff actually works. Think of it as a, this lost the wisdom which you are relearning. And I'm actually working on bringing her onto the show for an interview, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I will include all of her links, all of her information in the show notes below so, that, so you can go and check her out. 
So just like most things in nature, four phases of the moon, four phases of the seasons, there are four different phases of the of the female cycle. So the four phases are menstrual phase, then the, there is the follicular phase, and then there is the ovulation phase, and the last one is the luteal phase. And we're going to talk about each in, in greater detail. So the menstrual phase begins on the first day of menstruation, and it lasts until the fifth day of the menstrual cycle. The following events occur during this phase. So the uterus sheds its inner lining of soft tissue and blood vessels, which exit the body from the vagina into, in the form of menstrual fluid, right? I think we all know what that is. Um, and then also there is a blood loss of um, 10, 10 to 80 milligrams, uh, which is considered normal. And then you may experience abdominal cramps. And these cramps are caused by the contraction of the uterine and the abdominal muscles to expel the menstrual fluid. And then there is the follicular phase. And this phase also begins on the first day of the menstruation, but it lasts until the 13th day of the menstrual cycle. And these events occur during this phase. So first, the pituitary gland secretes a hormone that stimulates the egg cells in the ovaries to grow. And then one of these egg cells begins to mature in a sac-like structure called follicle. And it takes 13 days for the egg cell to reach maturity. And while the egg cell matures, its follicle secretes a hormone that stimulates the uterus to develop a lining of blood vessels and soft tissue called endometrium. So, and then right after, there is going to be the next stage, which is the third stage, the ovulation stage, and that would usually be on day 14th. On the 14th, 14th day of the cycle, the pituitary gland secretes a hormone that causes the ovary to release the matured egg cell. The egg cell is swept into the fallopian tube by the cilia of the fimbria. The fimbria are finger-like projections located at the end of the fallopian tube close to the ovaries, and cilia are slender hair-like projections on each fimbria. And after that, we get into the luteal phase, which is day 15 to 28. This phase begins on the 15th day and lasts until the end of the cycle. And the following events occur during this phase. So the egg cell released during the ovulation phase stays in the fallopian tube for about 24 hours. If the sperm cell does not impregnate the um, the egg cell, at that time, the egg cell disintegrates. The hormone that causes the uterus to retain its endometrium gets used up by the end of the menstrual cycle. And this causes the menstrual phase of the next cycle to begin. So throughout these four different phases, your hormones are at alternating levels. So your energy, your diet, your willingness to social, socialize and emotion, and also your emotional state differ from phase to phase. And I think this is key and this is what most of us are not thought. As females, we're only thought about the menstrual cycle and, the most, and, and most of us know nothing about the other three phases and how to eat, exercise, and optimize them for overall health and vitality. vitality. And today I want to teach you how you can use these in, this information so that you can thrive at work, at your relationships, at your parenting, at your marriage, and in other important aspects of your life. So this is what I mean by saying owning your divine feminine superpower. So here we go. Let's start by talking about how your diet should vary during each phase. So the one thing to remember throughout this entire process is that estrogen, the, f the female hormone, needs to be excreted properly and efficiently from the body. And the best way to do it is via food. So most symptoms that occur from hormonal imbalance imbalances, imbalance issues are the result of excess estrogen. And then the foods I'm going to mention here, they support the, metaboliza the metabolization of estrogen through your elimination organs and the removal of that unwanted excess from your body, right? So what I'm talking about here is that you need to poop, you need to sweat, you need to pee, 
you know, all of these elimination organs, you need to bring them out. This estrogen cannot stay in the body. And when it stays stuck in the body, this is where, this is when you will experience symptoms like acne or um, PCOS or um, weight, weight problems or, um, you know, hair gain or hair, hair loss. Um, all of this stuff is because of excess estrogen that is not efficiently excreted out of the body. So I'm going to talk about generic foods here. However, inside the Thrive Mastermind is where we're actually going to do much, we're getting much deeper into this and you will actually get a complete meal plan with recipes from me based on this exact philosophy. All right, so just keep in mind that this is all, all very generic. So during the follicular phase, which is before you ovulate and after your period, you should be eating foods like artichoke, broccoli, carrots, parsley, green peas, spring beans, and zucchini. And then when it's time to ovulate, um, which is during the ovulatory phase, you would eat foods like asparagus, Brussels sprouts, chard, um, scallions, and spinach. And you can see that these foods are mostly green, and there is a reason for that, because green is the color of, uh, of rebirth, right? And this is the time of the month when you actually have the potential to create life so a lot of like these foods they have a lot of life force and you will also see that during this time of the month you would crave foods that are uh, raw and like i mentioned they have a lot of life force in them so this is a great time to consume raw juices and consume um uh, green shakes and smoothies and stuff like that. And then l during the luteal phase, which is before you have your period, you would eat foods like cauliflower, collard greens, a daikon, radish or regular radish, onions, parsnips, squashes, and sweet potatoes. So you can see that here we're getting ready to excrete that, um, um, that lining from the uterus and so the, f the the body is requiring more of more foods that are coming from the ground they're very earthy most of them um grow below the ground and this is because this is the energy of the, f the f energy of the food needs to be supporting um that um that phase that you are at during this time of the month and then uh, we're getting into the menstrual phase, which is when you have your period. So you would eat foods uh, like beets, kale, kelp, mushrooms, foods that are uh, very soothing and very comforting. So you would crave a lot of foods like um, soups and stews and chilies and beans and like really warm foods and it's not surprising because this is when the body needs to just calm down relax and sort of be in a state of rest and as you can see this time of the month it's not necessary and it's actually not wise to eat and drink a lot of raw foods so if we are consuming you know let's that's why i'm saying you know, green shakes and green, you know, smoothies and, and juices are amazing, but you really need to know when is the best time to eat them, right? So it's not about, you know, having a green shake every single day, every single morning. It's about understanding how your body cycles and, and then pairing foods with the particular phase that you are at. So if you eat in accordance with your cycle, your body will get the support it needs to live in alignment with nature, to excrete the estrogen efficiently, and then your painful symptoms will be eliminated. And I cannot tell you how many times I've seen uh, women um, who start this, it's called cy cy cycle syncing. Um, you know, eating with a, in accordance to your to your uh, cycle, and that hel really helped their body to do what it was designed to do. So it's it's really magical. And now, <coughs> excuse me, I want to talk to you about your exercise regime uh, because it should also be different in each cycle. So again, since each phase has a different level of hormones, it is not wise to always follow the same exercise regime for every day of your cycle. And so here's what you can try instead. 
during menstruation uh, the type of workouts that you should be doing are things like walking uh, keep your work workouts mild even if you're not feeling major discomfort right and in in terms of the time of day an evening stroll is a perfect way to get some simple movement um, so again I see women constantly you know go 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 and you know doing these extreme and really difficult workouts but again when you are listening to your body and working with these four phases it's really unnecessary and you will actually help to support your body to support your thyroid to support your adrenal glands by um uh, by allowing your body to just rest and rejuvenate and especially during menstruation there it really is not necessary to um to push so hard and be so hard on your body right so this is the time when you're supposed to be resting and i also know i want to put the the this um I want to talk a little bit about guilt here because I, I remember for myself before I learned about this, you know, whenever I wouldn't or whenever I would like miss a class or, um, you know, I would skip it, I would feel so guilty and I, and I would feel so bad about myself. But then I, I understood that actually if I just if I skipped a class during my menstruation, it was just because I was listening to my body. So it's really unnecessary to feel bad about yourself during this time. It was actually my body um, intentionally being lazy, quote unquote lazy, um, during the time because it needed to just to just rest and basically, you know, if, if it's not to do nothing, then it's do nothing. But at least, you know, if you do want to, if you are used to physical exercise and movement, then at least, you know, walk or, um, or maybe, um, you know, a quick um, stroll outside. Uh, that would be the type of things that you want to do during this time. And then during the follicular phase, which is the week after your period, the best workout would be runs. So this is the time to do more of uh, hardcore exercises. Uh, and in terms of time, uh, you would do them midday uh, because your estrogen will be low and your cortisol levels will be just right for a challenging cardio burst. And then during ovulation, which is around mid-cycle, the best workout would be intense cardio, dance, or body weight circuit. So again, this is the time, about two weeks of the month, where you, where when you sh you should and you can do these hardcore exercises, right? Um, in terms in terms of the timing, it, the best time would be early morning because you'll have tons of energy during this time of the month. So take advantage of the, of that natural high. Your testosterone is higher during this phase as well. So whenever you do, so whatever you do, feel free to go all out, right? So this is the time. And then premenstrual, uh, which is the luteal phase, the, the best workouts would be things like Pilates and yoga and bar classes. Um, and when, again, keep it early, because especially during the first half of the day, um, and then transition into the early evening. And you might still feel full of energy during the first days of your luteal phase. So feel free to keep kicking butt <laughs> in more intense workouts early in the day. But if you start to experiment, to experiment PMS symptoms in the days before your period, it's time to tone it down and switch to Pilates or strength training in the early evening. So uh, things like restorative um, or yin yoga before bed can also be hugely helpful in combating issues like moodiness and bloating. All right, so this is really good stuff. And uh, I really hope that you... Um, uh, take that information and actually go go out and try and try to see how your body reacts to um, different exercises, different movement uh, during different times of, of your menstrual cycle, of your, not menstrual cycle, of, <laughs> of your cycle. All right, so now let's talk about how your social and mental state changes during each phase because that also changes. And you probably already noticed this, right? So you know how sometimes you're you you're feeling magnetic, energized, and dying to meet new people, and other times in the month you feel withdrawn, antisocial, like you need to do some meditating or maybe reflecting. So if yes, 
and i think for most women we 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 are feeling like that we were just not maybe not aware or not conscious of it so if yes then you're actually already cycle thinking without even knowing that so i'm going to talk about where to put the female social and energetic focus during each phase so during the first phase which is um let's start with the menstrual phase this is where this is where your sage um wise woman uh, is coming out this is when you're bleeding you're uh, and in terms of emotional state you are you f- you're feeling more reflective and passive and more withdraw- withdrawn so subconscious in- intuition uh, you have more of the of an inward focus for creativity and this is the best time for inner processing creative reviewing journaling um, you know looking at the core of things really reevaluating ref- reflaming uh, reframing letting go of things um, this is where um, new ideas will start you know coming up uh, you will have a lot of intuitive creativity and you will crave your body will crave rest and renewal and then during the next phase phase which is the follicular phase this is it's also called it's called the maiden and the virgin phase um, it's a very dynamic active you have um, increased consciousness uh, more awareness at this time and the best this is the best time for mental creativity for learning for clarity for concentration for researching for structural thinking independence and also physical stamina and you will also you'll feel it you'll feel like you have this oomph like you're so energetic you have so much energy you feel like you want to just you know go out there and do more and then during the um, the the next phase which is your ovulation time it's also called the mother energy um you would have um a lot of passive and outgoing conscious uh reasoning um you will have outward focus for creativity and this is the best time for communication for empathy for productivity for teamwork for supporting others for emotional creativity and creating relationships so this is the best time of the month to go out for meetings for having to have um sales calls because because you your body is giving you this um extra rush of hormones um this is the best time of the month to go out and actually do these things right so if in cases where you are creating your own schedule that would be the best time to schedule um talking to as many people as possible because this is the best time of the month as opposed to when you're menstruating uh, i think it's best to schedule things that are requiring less contact with other people and i think the the really amazing things thing about knowing this is that you are not feeling guilty constantly and you're not feeling like oh my gosh what's wrong with me like what can't, why can't i do this or i can why can't i do that this way you're actually living and again you're owning and living um in alignment with your uh, feminine superpower and then during the fourth phase which is the luteal phase um this is where your wild woman um and energy is coming out right you would feel more creative active um, you will have increased subconscious awareness uh, this is the best time for inspired creativity out of the box kind of thinking problem identification problem solving and also assertiveness and you will feel that you a lot of women tell me that during this time of the month they they feel like they um they want to create they want to get things done right so and it's 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 just it's amazing how the body is you know how the body works and all this you know cyclicality and once you understand that you really start shining um and you know i call it thriving (laughs) so in general during my period i spend lots lots of time alone reflecting journaling and taking long baths Um, I say no to most social situations when possible and I use this time as a way to reflect on the past on the past month to see what worked and what didn't think think of uh, this time as a time when your body is actually shedding aligning 
and for you to shed specific habits, people, or hobbies that are no longer serving you, right? So it's sort of like a little spring cleaning, cleaning if you will. And then during the follicle, follicular phase, um, this is when I set goals for myself and I plan out my month. I also set intentions for myself and my career. And it's a great time to start projects as your brain is most active with structural thinking. And then during the ovulation, I'm normally most social. I car, I crave time with my girlfriends and I say yes to all social invites. I also plan my own calendar according to my own cycle. And when I'm ovulating, I am most communicative. So I plan important business meetings and first dates around this time. I'm also most apt to collaborate during this time. It's a great time to call an old friend or maybe your mom and get together. And then in the first half of my luteal phase, I feel still social. So I still go out and I hang with friends, I'm usually most assertive during this phase, so no BS. Um, halfway through, I begin to feel agitated if I am around people too much and I begin to feel myself turning inward, right? So this is where I, most of the time I would feel like I'm being an introvert. And it's so it's so interesting to me because I am a declared, <laughs> I'm totally an extrovert. But obviously in modern day, in modern days, I don't have the pleasure of saying no to all social obligations and meetings. So I practice grace here and I do my best to honor my body while staying realistic. So if you're at least curious about this way of living, and I think this is so amazing, like imagine how things would change if this is how we would work, we would um, approach our relationships with people, um, you know, uh, even even mother from this way, right? First of all, giving ourselves the grace um, that, you know, things are different at each phase of our cycle and then teach this to our girls like how would things change for us and for them right so if this is at all interesting and you are still curious about this i recommend to check out alisa viti's book um it's called um uh, it's called the Woman woman code and she talks a lot about cycle syncing um you know, can, you can also get the Flow Living My Flow app, um, and also you can follow the Flow Living blog, um, and you can find links to all of that in the show notes below. Uh, and and then if you're reading, you'll have the links to that on my blog as well. If you're ready to take back control over your health and are looking for someone who will guide you through this process, guys, I really encourage you to apply to the Thrive Mastermind. Again, there is a link to apply in the show notes below. And we'll do things like cycle syncing, meal plans, nutritional coaching. You'll learn how to break through resistance and learn to love your female body. And I also, also, also encourage you to do that, if not for yourself, for yourself, then for your children especially if you're raising girls it is so important for us to show up for ourselves ourselves so that we can teach them to show up for them when the time is right right so if you are interested fill out the application and let's see if we are a good fit so i wish you lots of success tons of health and i'll catch you next time bye for now listening to the health begins with mom show i love hearing from you so please post your comments and questions over at healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash podcast if you love the show please share it on social media and in your real life with other moms who might enjoy this content and if you have a burning question or topic you'd like me to hit on the show just drop me a line at dorit at healthbeginswithmom.com and if you love this show and really want to support it please go to itunes write a review and subscribe thank you so much for listening and i'll catch you next time much love and many blessings